All right. Okay, hey everybody. So, um, Ina is having a really, really bad afternoon. She is teething. And when she teethes, she has, mm, she has poopy troubles. And she doesn't feel good. So she's having trouble going down for a nap and uh, I'm hoping she'll stop crying. I waited, waited a while. I thought about canceling. Um, but I had promised you all it's sewing day. So I wanted to talk to you about um, patterns and fabric and sewing and the things that I do. But she's crying a lot, so I'm going to have to cut this short. Um, so I think I've showed you guys this before, but uh, I'll just do it like this. This is my sewing area, kind of. This is one piece of it. And I have my serger over there. And then over here I have um, a second table and... My sewing machine, one of them. And then um, I print my patterns. So I have been buying um, PDFs. This one happens to be, this one's a Patterns for Pirates. Uh, yeah, that one's Patterns for Pirates. But um, I really, really like Ellie and Mac patterns. Um, so most of the shirts that I make for Ina are Ellie and Mac, although I do like some patterns for pirates and some made for mermaids. Oh yeah, she's just screaming her head off. All right, we'll make this a short one. Um, so the advantage of these is that you can print them off for the size that you want. I actually have two different sizes on this one. Uh, or no, I have two different necklines on this one because I was trying to decide what I wanted. And then you take these pattern pieces and you lay them out, and they're all marked. So like this one says, this is A1, this is A2, this is A2, A3. And as you lay them out, you build your pattern pieces. And when you're finished, then you have you know, a pattern piece like this, which is actually for a pair of pants. So this one has a yoga waistline, or it has an elastic waistline. And then it's shorts, um, a crop or long pants, and I don't like the ruched ones, so I cut that portion off and then I made a note to myself that I did that so that I know that those pieces are gone. And then I have a nice big cutting mat um, because I like to use my um, rotary cutter instead of scissors when I'm cutting out my fabric. And I wanted to show you kind of what my process is, so I'm not going to cut out a pattern because I'd already done that. Um, and this is actually a remnant piece um, or, you know, that's got some issues. Um, I bought it that way on purpose because it was cheap and so it was just, you know, a piece of fabric that I could use and play with. Um, anyway, and what I do is I lay out my my fabric after it's been washed. So I actually have a bunch of fabric that I'm washing right now. Let's see if she stops crying. And uh, usually when I'm cutting, I like to put my right sides together. And uh, that's good because this one has flaws on the back side. And then I take my pattern piece and I lay it out. And this one actually needs mirrored pieces. So a lot of times with my mirrored pieces, what I like to do is just go ahead and uh, lay it on the fabric so that it will uh, go ahead and cut both pieces at the same time. It does waste a little more fabric that way, but um, you know, it's up to you how you do that. And then the other thing that I do is um, if it's dark fabric and it's hard to see, um, I try to use a lighter color, but I really like these friction pens. I use these friction pens a lot to mark my pattern pieces and I just mark them on here. You can kind of see this electric uh, green on here and I just like mark it out and this comes out with heat so if you are pressing your pieces when you're finished, 
going to come off anyway. Um, and a lot of times I end up pressing parts of my, my work. So not a big deal to just mark on here. And you probably can't see the uh, faint green line. Let me look. Yeah, you can't see the faint green line. But there is a faint green line here that I can see for cutting purposes. See right here. And, um, and I did not mark the short line on here because what I'll do is I will lay in my ruler and then mark that on there. And then I just use my rotary cutter and I cut that out. And then when I'm all finished, I have my little pattern pieces. And one of the best things that um, I was, one of the best things that I learned, I should say, is that as I go through and I already have my pattern pieces folded because sometimes I'll say to cut on the fold. I go ahead and I cut a little notch in the top of my fabric piece. So there's just a tiny, tiny little notch right here where it's been folded. And I do that so that um, when I go to put my pattern piece in that I have um, the little notch that I can line up for uh, the center of my sleeve. And I go ahead and I do that on all the pieces where I think I'm going to need the little tiny notches um, right after I've cut them so that that's done. And then these are my sleeve pieces. I also like to mark, again, with that friction pen. There's an F on here. Let's see if you can see that, kind of. This is a front piece, and so I wanted to make sure that I marked it so that I knew that was the front. Um, this is a neckline piece. Sometimes I'll mark those as well. This is also my front so what will happen is this will be my front bodice and I have a tiny notch here and I have a tiny notch here so I know that those should match and what I would do is I'm going to take my little clips because this is part of my pattern and I'll clip this and sew that line and then this will flip up and it will become the front piece of a cute little watermelon shirt for Ina. And then on the back, I have um, more watermelons for the bottom and then the dark pink for the top so that I get the contrast. But poor little Ina is just not feeling great today. So we are probably going to cut this a little bit short. Uh, and I won't sew my whole shirt together, but I will show you. I like to take these little clips. I find them much easier to work with than... Um, pins, especially in this knit fabric that likes to curl a little bit. And I can just lay my pieces out on top of each other and I can clip my pieces here. And then I kind of subscribe to the more clips is better than less clips attitude. So when I am easing in, because I have to ease these pieces together, I like to kind of grab my midpoint and stretch a little bit. And then put a clip in and stretch a little bit and put a clip in. And sometimes I'll go back and forth from edge to edge. But that's why I went ahead and I clipped my edge here first. And these big clips are nice uh, for some things, but I like the little clips when I'm doing my curves and my edges here. And I would like to tell you that these are um, the expensive clover ones but they're not they are some cheap brand off of amazon but that's okay anyway i'm just going to ease my pieces together here hope that ina stops crying i don't think she's going to though poor little smidgen she's just not having a good day she's got too many teeth coming in all at once man she's got like four teeth, five teeth coming in all at once. It's terrible. Anyway, so now that I have this all clipped and ready to go, I can go over to my serger and go ahead and serge this piece together. And then I keep my iron plugged in and I like to set it to right between wool and cotton because I actually use wool um, ironing pads. Uh, that's what I like best. It's what works for me. So that's what I use. Um, hopefully she'll stop crying. I think she might have stopped now. We might get lucky. We might be able to finish this. 
Um, when it comes to sewing the edges, because this is the neckband, so I always like to do this too early on, get it out of the way. I kind of like to clip the edges here so that I can try to do, sew them flat without having to um, unclip them because these little neck bands are wiggly and they're hard to work with. Not impossible, just hard to work with. Okay, so here is um, my edge here. I have my neck band here ready to go. Uh, I have my iron that's starting to heat up. Let's see. Hey, Kathy. Ina's having a bad day, so we'll see if I get to finish this sewing tutorial or not. This is my serger. Um, you know, I was always kind of intimidated by them, but it turns out they aren't really that intimidating. Um, there are a lot of needles that are going at the same time, uh, but it's not a huge deal. And... Um, it's not that bad. So I have a Juki. It's not like a super fancy machine, but it works for me. And um, I do, I'm not, I'm only using three threads right now. I have this one over here, but it's actually not threaded at the moment. And I am using two different colors. And it's mostly because I'm still learning with my machine, even though I've sewn quite a bit of stuff. So I like to use the two colors so it helps me identify if I have a problem. Um, I haven't really switched colors much. I tend to just kind of go with the same thing and if it shows a little bit on the inside I don't care uh, the things that I'm making are for me it's not for anybody else so yeah I know poor I know she's she's teething and she always has poop issues when she's teething and uh, it just makes her really uncomfortable and really unhappy and nobody's happy when I know unhappy because you know she screams out her, uh, let me see if you can see what I'm doing, kind of. I'll try to stay, hold it back. So here I'm taking my neckband and uh, I just need to attach my edges. So we're just gonna zippity zip zip. And this time I am gonna take that out and hold on my edges. I don't worry about making my tails long because these are going to get cut off. Um, and then to finish the neck band, you actually flip this little guy inside out. Oh, look, it's almost, nah, not quite perfect. That's all right. We're going to flip it inside out, and then we are going to match the raw edges. And we are going to go take that iron and try to iron a nice crease into this so that it makes a nice neck band for the top of our shirt. So that's step one, but uh, I'm going to go put this under the iron, maybe, and hopefully she's done taking that out. It's always hard to get it under the iron, I promise I'm coming back guys. There. Um, I am I'm not actually using four colors. I'm only using two colors. Um, I have my purple here and then I have my beiges here. I am purposely using uh, the two colors. This one's just sitting over here. I was using it for some four thread uh, overlocking, um, surging, but I, I just have it sitting over here right now, Kathy. It's just hanging out. Um, I am purposely using the two colors because I'm still learning and so every so often I do have to go in and adjust my machine and it helps me because I know that this is uh, my like center stitch and then these two are my loops and so it helps me to find if I have an issue um, because I'm not practiced enough to not have it yet if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so that's my story. I'm sticking to it. All right, so now we're going to attach our little bodice pieces together. And yes, there are simpler um, shirt patterns that I could have chosen, but I thought this one was cute. It's actually the Discoverer tee from Ellie and Mac. Um, I have become quite fond of their patterns when it comes to um, 
the knit fabrics. So anyway, I'm just like, I'm sewing right up here along the edge and I do stop a little bit and adjust and that's a good thing to do. I mean, sometimes I get cocky and I sew straight through and then it doesn't look as good as if I've taken my time and adjusted my fabric a little bit and paid attention to how everything's coming together. And I do try when I'm serging to take just a little tiny bit off. I try not to take a lot off, um, but I do try to take a tiny bit off. And I try to be as even as possible along the serging line because that does matter. And again, I'm just going slowly and I'm adjusting my fabric a little bit. Um, and I've made this, I've made not this size, but I've made this pattern several times, so I'm at least a little more familiar with it, um, which helps because with these curves, this is actually one of the first patterns I made. Um, there we go. There's our little front now. And hopefully the iron has done its work and my neck band has um, come together. So that's the front. And now I'm gonna go in and there we go. I've got my iron working. Let's see how the neck band's looking. Not bad. Use a little more pressing. So the problem with me on these neck bands is that I have issues uh, bringing it together in halves properly and then it doesn't I'm gonna see like I have issues where it's curling here on the inside so I might just flip it inside out and do it again and there's got to be some trick to this but I haven't learned it yet on how to do the neck band so that it looks nice and tidy and then so that it irons nice and tidy I don't know. I just end up cutting them a little bit wider <laughs> and taking a little more fabric off. <laughs> Which is not probably the best plan when it comes to uh, serging, but that's what I end up doing. So let's use our iron. There we go. Put it together. I'm also going to iron this and I'm going to um, iron that seam down and I can see I didn't do a great job over here pulling at the end to line these up but I'll just correct that by taking off a little bit more when I serge my edges so there's my front um, my neck band and then here's my back and we've got to do the same thing to the back that we did to the front remember I did cut those notches the little tiny notches right here's one and I did mark this as the back. It's faint, it's hard to see, but there's a little B right there. And that also tells me that's the inside of my fabric. And I'm just going to clip these pieces together and do the same thing that I did before where I'm going to clip the edges and clip the middle and then try to ease them together and pull them a little bit. So, sounds like Ina might have finally stopped crying. Poor little thing. So, anyhow, I know this is like super exciting, isn't it? It is cute fabric. I really liked the watermelons. I really liked the watermelons. Anyway. And I actually got these in a remnant pack. That's what they're called. It's a remnant pack. I'm trying to remember. I like getting remnants just because it gives you a little something fun, small pieces, and this Discoverer Tea is a great way to use up those pieces because, uh, at least for the little kids, it doesn't take much fabric to make shirts for them, um, especially when you're doing the, the two different colors. So, let's see how this neck band's doing. Oh, it looks okay. Nah, it's still curling. Well, we're just gonna leave it. I'll deal with it later. I won't be able to make the whole shirt during our little session today, but I'm going to get started and I'll show you what I do and I'll talk to you about the mistakes that I've made because there's been a lot of them.
Um, one of the things that I struggle with is that I don't always get all of my edges surged together. Um, so I'll have one that like wiggles out a little bit. Sure, that's an issue that I have to watch. Okay, now I've got that one pinned together. So here we go. I'm just going to go in here and try to fold down my surged edge so that it is beneath my pink this time. And again, you can see where I didn't quite get this pulled out as far as I should have over here, so I don't have I don't have quite the uh, edge that I should have. And don't worry, I know it's going to look a little bit darker here. It's just the heat it won't actually be that dark. It's not changing it. So there we go. All right, I've got a little bit of got a little bit of this here. We'll just press that out again. There. Not so bad. So there's our front. And we have a neckband. And now let's go do a back. So here we go. Take you with me again. Um, yeah, I'll take a picture when I'm finished um, today, Kathy, and I will just put up the finished shirt so you can see the pattern. Um, it's it, This is the Discover River T um, from Ellie and Mac, which, again, I just kind of like Ellie and Mac. I'm not affiliated with Ellie and Mac at all. Um, I had a, another knitting friend that sews that kind of turned me on to the company. Um, I like a lot of what they make. I like the options that they give you um, where you can have short sleeves or long sleeves or bishop sleeves or straight sleeves and um, depending on the pattern of course. They just have all kinds of like even this one it's short sleeve um, three-quarter sleeve, long sleeve, so um, lots of options, which is nice, um, and then kind of how you put your colors together also gives you options, so the same pattern can really um, can give you a lot of different looks, which I think is really nice. On that one. Oh well. I try to get the same, mm, what's the word I want, the same speed throughout so that I don't have um, sections that are really different from each other. Um, but I mean, I still have issues where I don't have perfect surging. Uh, it doesn't look terrible, just not, it's not perfect. But you know what, I will wear it and it'll be fine. That's what I tell myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, they're both expecting babies. Hey, Angelus. Uh, and your niece is having a girl and your nephew. Are... Oh, your nephew and his wife are doing January. Yeah. Um, I So this one's nice because it's fast. And again, it gives you a ton of options where you can, you know, have short sleeves or you can have three-quarter sleeves or long sleeves. Um, and you know, this, I could have done this in, uh, solids here and the print here and, and you can really change the look of your pattern just by, um, changing the placement of your fabrics. Um, even though it's the same pattern, if that makes sense. So yeah, I, um, I don't do as much sewing as I probably should right now. But I have just been, I have been swamped with slow crawl stuff. I still have slow crawl stuff that I probably need to get done. But gosh darn it, I really wanted to sew a shirt for Ina today. So that's what we're doing. And slow crawl will wait until I'm finished today. And it'll be fine. So, probably should have started over on that side. Okay. So I'm just trying not to burn myself, <laughs> but also to get this seam flipped down. There we go. 
and I try to press more than actually iron most of the time so there is a difference in pressing versus ironing which I learned with my little sewing journey this year so you press it when you kind of set it down and let it go like this that's a press versus um, ironing which is what I'm going to do on this one because it's just a touch wrinkly and ironing is where you actually iron the fabric out okay not bad so here's our back our back our front and our neck band are ready so now we're going to take our front and our back piece and put them together and i like to do um, front to back and then i like to set in my sleeve and then sew the whole side seam at the same time some people don't like that they do um, they will sew the side seam and the sleeve separately and then set the sleeve in but i i don't know i think it's faster to um go ahead and set your sleeve in just as soon as you have your um, front and your back together so here we go i'm just going to stretch this a little bit it has to be stretched just a smidge Sure that it looks okay. I'm gonna put one in the middle to hold it, and one on each side, and then one in the middle to hold it, and one on each side again. And that will be my front to my back, just like this. And I am not like a super advanced sewer. I make a lot of mistakes while I'm doing this, but I just keep trying and it turns out okay and it's wearable. So that's how I feel about it. All right, now let's take this back to the serger. I know, isn't this fun? Back and forth and back and forth. This really is how I make my shirts though. Um, and that's why, I mean, I make sure I have all my pieces cut out and I know where everything goes. And usually I would be referring to the PDF pattern because there's instructions in the PDF pattern, but I have made this enough that I don't need to this time. And again, I'm not leaving long tails because I know that they're all going to be surged off in the end. So it's not a big deal. Again. Just like that. Okay, now let's talk about setting in sleeves. So here we go. Boy, it's just all kinds of fun today, isn't it? Okay, need lots of clips for setting in sleeves. So here's what I'm talking about. Here is my, my shirt. So my pieces I'm put together, my back to my front. And remember, this is my front. This is my back. So now what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to take that little notch that I cut and I'm going to line it up with the seam right here on my shirt. And then I'm going to take the very edge of my sleeve and I clip it here. And I've also discovered that it's really helpful to put a clip in on the side because I have to take this one off to serge it. So I'm going to do this. Two. And now you're going to say, but those shapes don't look alike. You are correct. They do not really look alike, but they do go together. So we have to take our piece and we have to stretch it to fit. So this is what I like to do. I like to kind of stretch between my clip points and then I'll hold it with my fingers. These are 
requires some dexterity. And then we're going to do that again. Stretch between the clip points and hold. And yes, I'm going to use a lot of clips because I can take these out as I go and it's not a big deal. So I'm going to use a ton of clips. That's why I bought like the bulk bag of clips because we're going to stretch and go and stretch and go. And I just think it's so much better if you have extra clips in versus not having enough and then it does something really weird. So I'm going to stretch it all the way. Pop one in, pop another one in. The other thing is that, of course, this is knit fabric, so knit fabric does like to curl. Knit fabric does mean that it's made by knitting. There we go. All right, look, look how many clips I put in. Show many clips. You don't have to put in as many in as I did, but it just makes me feel better <laughs> when I'm getting started. So I know that my pieces aren't going to shift as much. So we're going to do this and put the first sleeve in, and then we're going to take the second sleeve and do that again on the opposite side. So let's go over again. So, oops. If the neck, if yeah, the neckline is um, not quite similar. There's definitely a difference in the shape of the front versus the back. The front is a little bit lower. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and I suppose if you accidentally cut two back pieces, no one would notice that much um, because it is a smaller shirt. But oh, I can see I gotta flip that now. Come on, get in there. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to barely get this started. So I like to just barely get it started, get it under the knife and the foot, and then sort of very carefully ease it along again because we are trying to fit um, two curves together. One is the inside of the curve and one is the outside of the curve. And sometimes they don't want to go together really pretty. Um, this is also where I tend to have issues with the pieces um, not having been surged together where I end up with a little hole because I try to, okay, that's the seam. Sometimes it gets stuck on the seam. There, I'm gonna ease it through just a little bit more. Now, sometimes I am super practiced at this because I've been sewing, you know, several pieces over, a, you know, a couple days period. And I can whip through them really fast. I haven't sewn much lately. I made one shirt for Ina recently. Now, the next thing I like to do is just double check that I don't have any holes and check my seam. Oh, there we go. Because a lot of times I end up with little holes where I didn't quite get them surged together. Yay, I think I had a good seam this time. Good surged edge. All right, so there is our sleeves. Now we have one of our sleeves in. Look, it's starting to look like a shirt. There's the back, there's the front. It's starting to look like a shirt. So now we're gonna take all the clips and go do it again. Yeah, take all the clips and go do it again. Are you having fun? Am I making you sick yet, going back and forth like this? Oh good, I do think Ina finally fell asleep. Poor little smite. Smite smidgen. Not smite, that's the wrong word. Uh, I'll turn that down too. All right, so there you can hopefully see here's one sleeve all set in. So we're gonna do the same thing. And again, the advantage to this is that then you have one long seam that runs kind of um, along the edge of your shirt instead of having to fight setting this little sleeve in, which, yeah, I don't like fighting little sleeves. So I'm gonna take my little notch and line it up again and clip it and then anyway can do this all right and some of you might be going well what does this really have to do with a yarn shop well what have i got to say man we like making clothing we like making garments i like making sweaters and understanding how a sewn garment 
is constructed, it can be very helpful in understanding how a knit garment is constructed. And it can also tell you where you might have to reinforce um, on a top-down sweater, you know, a seam or a knot seam, but where you might need to put in some extra stabilizing stitches or uh, where you might consider adding some structure if you're going to do it top-down so that you can avoid problems like sagging. So garment construction is always useful, even if it is um, something like this. And I'm going to put an extra one in here because I have to take that side one out get started. So I have found it really helpful, actually, to be sewing um, both woven and with my knit fabric and to understand more how my garments go together so that when I am knitting, I have a better understanding of the structure of my garments mm -hmm. so I can make them fit myself better. So, I don't know. That's what makes sense to me anyway. So there we go. See all of my many, many clips. We're gonna go put this sleeve in. All right. It puts you in the mood to sew. Well, that's, that's nice. And it's not that I don't like spinning and weaving and tatting, and I've been doing a lot of knotted lace lately, which you all are probably quite aware of. Um, that's been one of the few things that I could still do, you know, like a few stitches here and there, even with slow crawl. Okay. So I've got myself started. And I'm going to take that one out. And then I'm just going to give this a little stretch and ease my way along. Corners are hard. Oh, that'll be my husband going to get the mail. Corners are hard. So, um, you know, round things are hard when you're surging. So it's always good to go a little bit slower. And I do try to keep my finger well back of the knife. Even when I'm tempted. All right. Now you may see that I'll have to help ease it through again because we've got the seam coming up. Hopefully it doesn't get stuck. Okay, good, it didn't. And I'm trying not to stretch this too much, but just give it a little stretch as I go along because I don't really want to distort my fabric. But I do want my pieces to fit together. There we go. All right, and flip it open and just double check that I can't see any daylight through that. Yay, look, I had two good sleeves this time. All right, and now it's really starting to look like a shirt. So here we go. Here's our little shirt coming together. So there's not much left to this. And the reason that I wanted to do it this way is now I can do these nice long seams on each side of my shirt. So we're going to go flip the right sides together again and clip it all together. And I like to clip both sides and then I can just go zip zip and sew both. Um, and see, uh, Tina says I've learned so much from sewing for knitting and crochet as well. I really think that um, you don't have to be... <laughs> You don't have to do all of these arts to be a well-rounded, you know, expert in your chosen craft. Definitely not. But if you are a bit of um, a magpie or a jack of all trades, I do have to say that um, the more you learn about garment construction and sewing and needles and thread and, and twist and spin and fiber, um, the more competent you become and I think the faster you're able to pick up and learn new arts and new techniques and I am trying to line up my seams but of course I I did make a little boo-boo right here where uh, these aren't gonna line up quite as nice because I didn't stretch uh, stretch that fabric all the way down but I'm gonna pop an extra clip in there and hope that I can make it work and then 
I think I'll just go ahead and clip these together. And then I will have to hem the bottom edge. I mean, I don't have to because it's knit fabric, but if I want it to look nice, I need to hem my bottom edge. And I'll also have to hem my sleeves, but we are at least going to get through the neckband so I can show you that. And I do, um, I just use a stretch stitch on my sewing machine. So it's not like you have to have a super fancy machine. You can use a serger, you don't have to use a serger. There are a lot of people who sew and they use their, you know, stretch stitches on a sewing machine and it's fine. I just, I like my toys. Shh. Um, and I have to say the serger does make things go super fast, um, super fast. And I make pillowcases on that sucker now. And I tell you, oh, such fast pillowcases. All right, so there's one side. And I'm just going to go ahead and clip my other side too. And yes, I know there's a ton of strings hanging off. Don't worry, those will all disappear. Um, when I make these seams though, I am going to pay attention and make sure that I serge off um, extra thread because I will have to tuck those in to finish off my edges because um, I won't be cutting them off. Um, I'll be hemming it, so that'll help to keep my tails from coming out, but it's always better to just be a little extra careful. Um, I'm not always um, a little extra careful, <laughs> although I try to be. Uh, and sometimes I end up with problems and then I have to go back in with my serger. And I'm gonna tell you, I fudge it a lot and I just kind of flop my serger back in there and I don't, you know, if there's a little hole, I just kind of, take my serger and fill it back in when I find them because <laughs> I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to unpick the whole edge and have to, uh, <laughs> and have to undo it uh, to go back in and properly serge something. So I just kind of, I just fudge it. I just fudge it and, <laughs> and fix the hole. So, okay, now you can see how this is coming together pretty quick. And all I really have left to do are my two sides and put my neckband on and I do want to show you how to do that and then I will do the hemming later because you know this is getting long enough um, but yeah poor poor smoosh finally fell asleep so uh, they say the same thing about learning languages the first two are hard after that they're easier well you're probably right um, and yes Bev it's always ease it in just ease it in and, and go um, and with this particular pattern, I usually start up at the sleeve because I want to make sure that my seams match here. And I have more trouble if I start at the bottom um, making those seams match. So you can laugh at me if you want, but this is what I do because this is what I found works better for me. May not work better for you, so always take what I tell you with a grain of salt. Um, you know, if there's something that works better for you, do it your way. So, yeah. All right, let me get this started. And again, curves are, are hard when you are surging. And we've also got the added issue of... There we go. Come on, baby. The seams, which I am trying to keep lined up. But also the fact that I had issues with the edge and didn't get my piece pulled out as far as it should have been. Okay, so we're going to try and do the same amount of trimming on this side as I do on the other side. And I'm actually going to just throw a clip in down here. Because I have to take this one out in a minute. There we go. Now I can take that off. And look, now we've got one done. And it looks like I mostly got my seams lined up, but I didn't do a very good job. That's all right. You know what? It's going to be done and it'll hold. And that's really the most important thing. All 
I dropped all my clips too. So sometimes what I would do is I would go back in and I would surge over this again. This should not be like this. These loops should not be like this. But I was having issues getting it over my lumpy bumpy seams. And to be perfectly honest, I don't care today. So we're just gonna go snag the other one and see if we can do a better job. <laughs> That's always the goal is to learn and do a better job next time, right? Out. This is where we're going to get into issues. Come on, baby. There we go. All right, and now, again, I'm going to take the same amount off on this side that I took off on the other side. So that at least it's even, and throw my clips all over my floor. And now, moment of truth, I'm not going to clip the bottom. Oh, bad Kelly, probably should. Yeah, not okay. So there we go. And now all of the many, many, many clips all of the mini clips but we have a shirt so there's the shirt it's coming together and all that's left now is the neckband oops sorry keep doing that every time i come back over here all right so neckband things i've learned with my neckbands um first of all I'm really bad at getting these pressed properly, but if you can press them better than I can, you're going to have a better time. Um, I, again, I like to cut notches and I like to cut my tails off because those are gonna come off anyway when I'm over here. So make sure that your seam is lined up and as flat as you can get it. And I know I've already pressed this, so I am going to come in here Try to ease it together a little bit more. And I'm going to take a little notch. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. Little notch right here. I like to get it through both if I can because now I am going to match my notch and my sewn edge. And I am going to quarter it. So that's what we're doing right now. So we are quartering our neck band. I actually think I'm gonna go ahead and try to give that a little press. And the reason that I'm doing that is, um, oh, and look, I didn't get that. That edge is a little, I have to watch that when I go to surge it together and make sure I get all those pieces. I did better on that side. So this is what happens when you aren't careful. Your pieces, your little pieces don't line up as well as they should. This is a boo-boo. This is a problem. But we're going to fix it and it'll be okay. Um, so the reason that we're going to quarter our neck band and the reason that I repressed it is because that's going to help us to ease it into the neckline. And that's, again, I'm just taking a little notch out. And if you'll remember, I have a little notch here and a little notch here that tells me that this is the front and the back uh, center because when I, um, when I had these folded, looks pretty good, when I had these folded, I nicked them just that little bit. Now I am going to take those and fold them together and find myself the center of that so that I can quarter my shirt as well. And the thing you'll find is that your quarters are not going to be on your seams, which is where you would think they would be. Your quarters are going to be just slightly in front of that. And then I'm just going to knock it and notch it. And let's see if I got enough of a notch. I think I got enough of a notch on both sides. Sometimes I have to refold. That looks okay. I've got tiny little notches there. And then there's two schools of thought on this. You can 
Um, I like to do it like this, where I put the neckband on the inside. Um, and I, you can sew it either on the inside edge or the outside edge, and I'll show you what I mean when I say that uh, when we get to the serger. But I'm just going to match my notched points to start with. So here's my little notched points. Here's a little notched point. So we're going to quarter the neckline to begin. And remember, this is not our quarter. Our quarter is actually up here. Now it seems strange. This is how it works. This is what I do. Then find our little notch and our little notch and line them up again. All right. Now we have to stretch our neckband between these points like this. And this is why it's so important to press that neckband and have it come out properly. And this is where I tend to have issues because I have problems getting it pressed properly. And I've tried all manner of pressing, but I haven't found one yet that uh, makes it easier for me and gives me better neckbands. I'm still working on it. I'm sure that eventually it will make sense. But uh, this is what I do. Because it's stretchy, because this is our knit fabric. It's not woven fabric. You cannot do this with woven fabric. You'll have issues. One, it doesn't stretch like this. And two, if it is stretching, that means you don't have it on the grain. So, and yes, I'm putting tons of extra clips in. Um, because again, I would rather have too many clips and have to take them out than not enough clips and then have problems. So, here we go. And you know, this neckband construction has really helped me too in, in sweaters and visualizing again on my knitting how my pieces have to fit together and in understanding um, kind of the mechanics of it more. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone. So here we are, putting our neckband in, and again, I'm just going to stretch this. Stretch, 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 stretch. Poor Ina, I really hope her teeth come in a little faster, because she has just been struggling and so unhappy. And there's a the little bee that let me know this was my back. Um, let's see if the F on my front is still there. The cool thing about those friction pins is it just disappears. There it went. You can still vaguely see it, but the rest of it should wash out when I put it through the wash. So, yeah, and that B, again, probably mostly come out when it goes in the wash, but I don't care. It's on the inside of my fabric. All right, now we're going to go do the hard part. Look at all those clips, man. Oh, the hard part of attaching everything together. So let's go. All right. Tip down one more time. Now, I like to start at the back, and I usually end up removing two clips and stretching the back. And this is also kind of a hard part of um, surging because now we have to surge on and surge off and make sure that everything matches. Oh, this, this is gonna help me too. So most machines, not all machines, most machines will have a free arm, especially newer ones. So you can remove your um, plastic piece and adjust your free arm for easier sewing. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit stuck. Alrighty, we are in. Kind of angle yourself in and then off and running. And I'm going to go a little bit slow. I'm going to keep pulling my clips out because, again, I have issues where I go too fast, especially when I haven't been sewing for a while. And then I end up with holes because not all of my serge pieces are.
are coming together. So, and I do like to take a little bit off when I can, just to try to make sure that um, I am trying to prevent holes. Okay, and I've made it halfway around. This is my halfway point right here. I can tell that because here's my little notches that I'm trying to line up. And I can also see that my neck bend notch and my shirt notch are not quite as aligned. There we go. As I would prefer. There we go. Okay. I have been making sure that I stretch it a little bit. I'm trying not to overstretch. I'm trying to, uh oh, that clip's coming out a little bit. Get back in there. Let's back in there. I am trying to make sure that I am stretching a little bit, but I'm not overstretching my neck band so that it all comes together nice. And here's my little problem. I have to take off a little extra right here where I didn't sew it quite right. Okay. And then I'm actually just going to move that in. Okay. This is also an issue because uh, now I have to make sure that my pieces come together and I can see that I didn't quite catch my fabric properly together at the beginning of my round. So now when I do this, I am going to surge it off. And leave a long tail because I now have to lock my tail down. But it's only one tail to lock in. So there we go. Here's the beginning of our cute little shirt. Let's see how I did. Not terrible. I don't see any holes. That's the big thing. And, uh, and I don't have giant wrinkles. So I did, I did okay. I did okay. So there we go, front and back. And again, not terrible. Could have been a little better. But uh, no giant wrinkles and no holes. And all I have left to do now is to go ahead and hem um, my sleeves and my bottom and I'll actually go ahead and use my iron to turn my hem up and then I will hem this with a stretch stitch on my sewing machine but I'm not going to show you guys that today because uh, you know I've been on long enough and we've been having fun sewing a little shirt for Ina but not terrible doesn't look doesn't look terrible she'll wear it I'm sure she won't even care she'll just be excited because there's watermelon on it so um, I like to do a little machine maintenance as well once I'm finished where uh, I take my little thing off and I take my cover and I like to grab my brush and just go in here and kind of brush off a bunch of the lint and gather up a bunch of the lint. It's kind of an important thing to do with these machines um, because they do, because they're cutting so much, uh, they develop a lot of lint. Um, so I will go in here and I'll do a better job and suck all this out and, uh, take all this out because ew, just ew. And yes, your machine should be off when you're doing this, but what can I say? I'm living on the wild side while I talk to you guys. So there. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, so there we go. A little a little t-shirt for Ina and there it is over here so that's my little t-shirt for Ina and you know um, yes there I know there are many vacuums you can get for that yes I uh, I have I have vacuums so that's not a problem anyway so my next steps are I will go ahead and um, I'll actually take a tapestry needle <laughs> from my knitting and um, I use these to put my ends in, which is why I try to have as few ends as possible because, well, I don't 
necessarily mind putting them in. It's just more work. And I just do this and then I trim it short. And now I can hem this safely and those threads aren't going to come out. So I will just, I'll turn this under a little bit and, um, and I'll use my iron and then I'll use again, a stretch stitch on my, on my machine. So one more time, I just take this tail and I grab a tapestry needle. Nice one. I like bent tip ones for this too. Um, I don't know why. I just think it helps me. And I just go like this and bring it in. So there we go. And then there's two more down here. So anyway, that's why I like to make my shirts like this instead of trying to ease in the sleeves. I like to do these one piece sews, which I think this is more of a production style. Um, anyway, and then I will go ahead and uh, I will measure around and just do like a little half inch hem or something on on all of them and hem, uh, hem this on my machine. No, oh, I didn't do a great job. Luke, you can see I didn't do a great job down here. Good thing we're going to hem that and hide it. It's another good reason to hem. So, there we go. Oh, there's one left. This one, you just hide. You can also top stitch this, which I haven't done, but you can top stitch this down so that um, you put a little stitch right here along uh, your neckline, and that will help to lock the edge down on... Um, your two sewn pieces, your, I forget what this is called. This is terrible, but it's not coming to me. Um, anyway, so with this one, I'll go back like that. Just like that. And snip. Um, I do sometimes take my iron, and I'll come in here, and I will just sort of help it lay down a little bit better. But, um, you know, it's kind of for Ina. This isn't like, I'm not entering this in a competition. This is just for her to wear and enjoy. So, you know, whatever, man. There, watermelons. Happy watermelons. All righty. So I'll turn this around. And hey, look, I'm back. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So anyway, um, sorry I was late, and you know, poor little Ina, poor little Ina and those teeth, man. I just, I don't know. I might have to move my, might have to move my talks back a little bit, um, since Tina's not going to be doing her Friday talks anymore because she does those um, morning YouTube videos instead. Um, I might move my talks back to like 3.30 or 4 central time, so it'll be a little bit later, just because Ina has been kind of resisting nap time more, and um, she's sort of headed towards like a, I don't know, like a two-hour nap instead of a three-hour nap. So, you know, things change. Little ones grow. Um, anyway, so you may see a slight shift in the time but I will always let you guys know that we're shifting the time of course um, I'll stick to the three o'clock for Wednesday if I can manage it this week and then I will probably try to try to shift back uh, next week to 3 30 and see if that works a little bit better um, yeah we'll see and, um, and then I'll, I'll try to get that done maybe so anyway I hope that um, making the little shirt today was fun for you guys, um, and thanks for joining me. So let's see, don't forget, we still have Europe self-care going on, so make sure that you are taking photos and posting to your favorite social media plates and tagging Black Sheep Fiber Emporium to be entered in the May monthly, um, the May monthly contest. And I want to say... Um, Let's see, what is what is this month? Oh, it's the Little Indulgences. It's Spa Day, Little Indulgences. So um, I actually, ooh, I have it. I pulled out um, a lovely skein of silk, uh, caked skein of silk. Lovely stuff from Handmaiden. So if everything goes to plan, I will be making something with that in the future. 
that's the plan. That's kind of my plan anyway. And then, um, let's see, what else do we have going on? So year of self-care, make sure you're posting about that. Uh, oh, slow crawl, of course, slow crawl. I talked about that several times today. Uh, if you haven't picked up your passport, uh, don't forget it is open to pretty much anybody in the US. Um, Canada, if you really wanna pay the shipping, but you know, I understand if you don't. But um, yeah, Slow Yarn Crawl is coming up. It starts the 28th of this month. It runs all the way until September 6th this year. We have 32 shops. We have 50 patterns. Um, we have five regions plus a bonus region, I think. It's a lot of regions. So there's lots and lots of prizes. And the ways that you can participate if you are in the Pacific Northwest, you grab your passport and you can travel to the shops and get your passport stamped. Um, if you're not in the Pacific Northwest, you can still participate. Um, you just have to make a purchase. So that's how we know that you're participating is you make a purchase. And then we'll send you a sticker or a stamp for your passport. And um, every region that you finish, you can enter your passport for um, a prize, actually. Um, so that's what, five different prizes? And then if you, six different prizes if you count the bonus one. And the, we're actually in the bonus region and there's only two shops. So you have to make a purchase from two shops and you're entered for a drawing from, for that region, for the bonus region. So it's, you know, that one's like the really easy one to do right there. Um, anyway, but if you go to all uh, 30 shops on the crawl um, that are, are the regular in-person shops, or if you shop and purchase from all 30 of those shops throughout the course of the summer, then you can be entered for our grand prize drawing as well. And it's, it's good stuff because we get stuff from every single shop. So we get stuff from every single shop we have, we have, and we're giving out at least three grand prize baskets this year. If we have enough, we'll try to give out a fourth, um, or a fifth. I mean, we get a lot of stuff. So we try to spread the love as much as possible and make it easier for everybody to, uh, you know, enjoy the crawl. So, and don't forget, you get free patterns with every shop that you go to. So you get at least one, if not two free patterns for every shop that you are making a purchase from during the slow crawl with your passport. Uh, or you get free patterns just for visiting the shops if you happen to be in the Pacific Northwest. So if you're looking for a fun vacation and, you know, you want to make it around the slow crawl, it could be really fun. Um, and you get free patterns everywhere you go. So that's kind of fun. You know, and we have crochet and knitting. We try to make sure every shop has a knitting pattern. At least half the shops have a crochet pattern as well. We're working to get more and more shops on that crochet bandwagon. So, all right, I hope I've, I've talked enough about that. Um, anyway, I will see you on Wednesday for spinning. We're doing spinning this Wednesday, and I'm going to show you how I split a uh, four ounce braid so that um, you can make it do what you want it to do, if that makes sense. But we'll talk more about that on Wednesday. Um, but I'll show you my methods for how I get a braid to look the way I want it to look. So um, until next time, do please take care of yourselves mentally, emotionally, physically, craftually. Make sure that you are doing a little bit of crafting, some kind of crafting. Um, Kind of every day, every day. I think every day is good, right? Every day is good. And don't forget to, you know, buy yourself a little something just because you like it. A little silk. I like the silk. It's beautiful silk. This is like a really pale green too. It's hard to see, but silk, just saying. Anyway, um, and then next Monday, of course, we will be doing uh, tatting. The Monday after that, um, I think we're doing more knotted lace and, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm gonna have to talk about what we're doing so that we can get it up and and make some plans. So, I will see you all on Wednesday. Bye. Thanks for hanging out.